Good morning, dear church, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church, alive and online. Welcome to all those who have joined us near, from near and far. We're honored that uh, you have invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on uh, Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Let us know that you are here, either through the Facebook chat or the comment box, if you, are if you are viewing through the Google link. You can put your prayer requests in the comment section that runs on the right of our live stream. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching, loving, and caring. No matter where you live, there are several ways to be a part of our community and to participate in God's reaching, loving, and caring mission with us. Immediately following today's worship, Adult Forum, Here I Stand, resumes with study of another social statement from the ELCA, of which we are a part, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We are studying the economic life, sufficient, sustainable livelihood for all. Holy hops, Theology Pub will gather this evening at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The discussions are lively and the fellowship superb. It's BYOB, bring your own beverage, and get ready for fun. Join the MICA study group led by Pas Pastor Ken Martin on Thursdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Now, this group welcomes all regardless of gender or age. And we have the group is currently studying White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Each week, study questions are sent to those who have signed up. Links to these activities and more can be found in the events section of the Resurrection Lutheran Facebook page, which you can access even if you don't have a Facebook account. We continue our three-week worship series entitled, There is Now, with Enter into the Joy. There is no entry fee to the kingdom of God. Your net worth has nothing to do with your eternal value. You are chosen child of God because you are loved just the way you are. In an era of division and hatred based on external factors such as race and ethnicity, every person, every person has an inherent worth. Enter into the radical, life-changing, world-changing joy. Leading us in worship today are Ali Beck, Terry Evers, Alex Johnson, Chuck and Ann Price, and Greg Williamson. In the booth, we have Dave Evers, Jeff Slunt, and Kelly Slunt. And I'm Heidi Moore, pastor here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. So wherever you are, join us as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship of the one true God and sing with us the call to worship, This is the day that the Lord has made. You can find the words on the screen or in the bulletin. And again, welcome. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in this. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord Join us for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose image in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that, that we, are we are not, not awake, awake for you. you. We are we not, not faithful in using, using your gifts. gifts. We, we forget, forget the, the least of our siblings. siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see in, in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcomed. 
And in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. This time we share the peace. We invite you to do that uh, again with each other through our Facebook chat or Google chat. And the peace is brought to us by those participating in the adult forum, which meets right after this worship service. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. There they are. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be peace with, be with you. you. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is a feast of victory.
together, let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Join us now for singing and reading of Scripture. from 1 Thessalonians. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not anoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. The word of the Lord. Let us welcome the gospel in song. to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. 
Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents, and see, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward and saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter, gather where I did not scatter then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For, all, for to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even when they will even what they have will be taken away as for this worthless slave throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth the gospel of the lord praise to you o christ i ask the children to come forward and join me here for the children's sermon now i'm a type of person where i make a lot of lists because i tend to forget things And so what are some of the things that your parents uh, remind you to do? Could it be clean your room, walk the dog, remember to take out the trash, all those things. Remember, remember, remember. So I've written down a list here, remember, remember. Now sometimes if I don't have a list handy, I'll take a Sharpie and make a note to myself right on my on my uh, hand right there that way it's always with me and i can remember now we heard in the first reading today that we're reading called thessalonians now concerning the times and the seasons brothers and sisters you do not have to you do not need to have anything written to you what paul says they've got this And Paul goes on to say, remember who and whose you are. You are God's beloved child. So when doubt creeps in, remember that you have got this. And one of the ways you can get this is by coming to worship and listening to the word being read. And that's one way that we can remember who and whose we are. And of course, we have a cross on our forehead to remind us of our baptism. Amen. Enter into the joy. 
Did you know that 2020 has only two Friday the 13th? And depending upon how you marked it, the initial lockdown orders for COVID went into effect beginning Friday the 13th, March 13th, or, it, or the Ides of March, as in Beware of the Ides of March from Julius Caesar, the play by Shakespeare, which is March 15th, nine months ago. Now, this past Friday was the second Friday the 13th, and of course, today, Sunday, is the Ides of November, the 15th. And on Friday the 13th, the whole Commonwealth of Virginia got put in COVID timeout again when Gov Governor Northam issued amendments to Executive Order 6367 and the Order of Public Health. Emergency effective at midnight tonight. In short, public gatherings inside and out are reduced to 25 person limit, wear your mask, and if you don't, you're gonna get in really big trouble and face a class one misdemeanor. Now there's a few others on that list, but I think you get the gist. And just so you know, in 2021 and 2022, we'll only have one Friday the 13th in August and May, respectively. Now, let's do the math. It's been exactly, exactly nine months that we have been at this. Nine months ago, we started our online worship services. So, nine months of unprecedented times. So I went down another Google rabbit hole, looking up the definitions for unprecedented and precedented. Now, unprecedented is something never done or known before. In our lifetimes, I think COVID qualifies. Now, precedented, something that comes before, an example or a rule as a guide. So our Supreme Court uh, uses precedents that's been set, for, set in the laws to inform their decisions. But then I asked myself that very scary question. What if the unprecedented has become the precedented times? Then what do we do? So taking all and that anxiety and moving it to hope, just remember, we do have hope, real hope, that this pandemic will, in fact, end. And then this parable that Jesus tells. Now, we're having a series of three parables last week, this week, and next week. And these parables are being told a bit differently. Jesus is talking to the disciples only. And it doesn't use the formula, the kingdom of heaven is like. But rather, this parable uses, for it was as if. In other words, Bible speak for here's an example. A harsh master, three slaves, a bunch of talents, and of course, weeping and gnashing of teeth and being thrown out into the outer darkness. Outer darkness, that's the place where it's not just dark, it's really dark. Enter into the joy. Now, when it comes to parables, we like to assign roles. This character is God, this other one is Jesus, and this might be us, and so on and so on. And so it's a really easy leap to assign God to the master role and us to the slave roles, and we best be producing, or it's lights out and into the outer darkness we go. And I think maybe this would make for a good stewardship sermon. Except I have a really big problem with this logic. And it's in this line. Master, I knew that you were a harsh man. Harsh God? God is love. Says so many times right here in the Bible and in the New Testament. What about Jesus telling the disciples in the Great Commission at the end of Matthew, at the end of this very gospel, remember, I will be with you always till the end of the age. It doesn't fit. And no matter how hard I try and try to finagle with the meanings, it just doesn't fit. So I tell myself, okay, just breathe. What is a parable? 
a story that is not necessarily true, but reveals truth about God, Jesus, and the kingdom, and us. Now, I can let myself off the hook on this because this is a not necessarily true story. But then there's that other part, the revealing of truth. So let's look at, at the world in which Jesus lived. It was harsh and despotic with malevolent leaders, oppressive to the poor, systemic poverty because systems designed to keep people in their places, classism because they had a patronage system, system and yet racism, yes, racism, because you have Jews and Samaritans and Romans regarding each other as the other not like me and therefore you are not worthy. Precedented? You bet. So if that was precedented, let's take an unprecedented approach to this parable. What if the truth, what if the truth that we are to understand is in the guy who gets offed in the end. What if that person was Jesus? What if the harsh master was in fact the world as Jesus knew it? The Roman Empire, the empire that made money off the backs of people. The Roman Empire who participated in part predatory lending where love for neighbor and the other was not the rule of life. Everyone lived for the emperor and made money for the emperor. So the first two slaves performed well. They went out and doubled the master's money. We don't really know how they did it. It could have been a Ponzi scheme, who knows? But they participated in the capitalist economy of the day. And those who have get more. And those who don't, there is no way out for you. And then there was the third slave who took what the world gave and said, here, you can have it back. I'm not going to participate in this. I'm not going to play the game. I'm not going to be a part of this oppressive regime. I'm done. Here, take your harsh predatory systems of privilege. Take it all back, all of it. No less, no more. It's yours. And the looked down upon, remember that he was given the least. Of the three, he was given the least. His abilities were considered negligible. And that he was given a, the least. The subver subversive slave is called lazy and wicked and remanded to the outer darkness, death. You see, there are consequences for defying and standing up to what is wrong, proclaiming a gospel of inclusion and love for all, and when God says all, all means all, refusing to participate in predatory privileges. Jesus is warning his disciples that when you do this, when you participate in this worldly regime, then this is what might happen. This is what might be happening to you. Being thrown out into the outer darkness. Because the reality was, it was about to happen to Jesus. He was about to die on a Roman cross, branded as worthless, subversive to the empire. Doing the right thing will not have rewards here, but perhaps somewhere else, perhaps eternal life, as will be described in the gospel reading for next week. In the end, this parable is challenging us to evaluate how we interact in this world. What systems do we participate in and perpetuate many times without even knowing it? What can we do to change it? How might we stand up to it? Who might we stand up for? Is it the hungry, thirsty stranger that needs welcomed? The naked, sick, and imprisoned that need care? Those that the next parable of the sheep and goats talk about? 
that parable that we will study next week as we finish up the year of Matthew? Perhaps what this parable is warning us about is that a system constructed as the Roman Empire, any empire for that matter, is not the way to go. Perhaps this parable is telling us sometimes we need to be truth tellers, like the slave, the third slave. Master, I knew you were a harsh man getting things you don't deserve. Perhaps this parable is telling us that when we do these subversive, subversive things, we will suffer the consequences by being labeled and cast out. Enter into the joy? Yes. Enter into the joy of the one we follow. Entering into the joy of Jesus, it may be difficult and unpleasant, but I would rather be standing in the joy of Jesus than anywhere else. Each of us gets to decide where we stand. Entering into the joy of Jesus, entering into the world that says it is the joy and the way to go, we have a decision. Enter into the joy. Amen. to me.
longing for Christ's reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, by the church, Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of the nations, send forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness in, with your radiant not, light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing, especially as we lift up Bill Evans, Steve Scent, Gino Dominguez, Angela Jones, John Dutton, Cooper Hill. Hear us, O Lord, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holiness, holy restlessness in us to extend love to those on the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us this morning with our worship. And there, like I said, there were many ways that you can participate in the mission and ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church. We depend upon your gifts, your, your um, tithes, your prayers, most importantly, to keep this ministry going. And there's a new ministry coming up. It's called Keys for Christmas. And you'll hear a, a little bit more about that in the coming weeks. But Keys for Christmas, for someone who... Uh, has no home will be a great and glorious gift too.
God is the only maker of all things near and far. Painting the wayside flower and lighting the evening star. Blessing us with the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Join us in our celebration song, I Stand Amazed.
May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. And the blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. send you out in mission, we just have a few reminders for you. Immediately following today's worship, the adult form, Here I Stand, resumes. This evening, join Holy Hops Theology Pub at 7 p.m. The Micah Study Group continues on Thursday, and Zoom links to all these events are in the, are, all these events, are in the events section of our Facebook page. We'll see you here next Sunday at 10 a.m. And until then, beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.